George says, I'm the spirit of heaviness. But on the garment of praise. That's how we fought our battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. What we're doing tonight. This is how I fight my battles. Just when you think you're lost. Welcome to the broadcast. Let's get into it. I'm glad I'm off for three days and I'm tired, amen, from working. So, Father, bless the broadcast. Use it on YouTube and social media. Save the sinner nearest to hell. We lift up the only Savior of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ. And bless your people, Jesus. Amen. All right. So, cut the choir off. Make sure it don't come back on. All right. Hope everyone had a good day today. And we'll get right into Job. That's where we're at. Job chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. And let's look at what the Word of God has to say in these verses. And when they lifted up their eyes, and this is Job's three friends, they got together. They said, let's go visit Job. He's going through multiple valleys. All ten of his kids have been killed in a tornado. Many of his servants and much of his wealth has been destroyed from... Uh, all different types, attacks of enemy people from other countries, areas, fire from heaven, on and on. His own wife, the wife has told him to curse God and die. Other words, commit suicide, according to what scholars say. And then on and on we go here. Uh, Job's three friends come. And they come to mourn and comfort him. Verse 12, and when they lifted up their eyes. Now that's what the Holy Ghost spoke to me. I don't know about you, but when you lift up your eyes, you realize that this world's in a mess. It's always been in a mess, but it's really in bad shape. We need to lift up our eyes from ourselves and look uh, at others. And I don't want to get too bogged down. Afar off. I mean, they saw him from afar off once they got to. Of course, Job lived one of the richest men in the east, he probably had a huge plantation, no doubt. They saw him from afar off. They didn't even knew, know him. That's how all the, you know, he has his disease all over his body. And uh, scholars say it was some type of leprosy. And uh, they didn't even recognize him. His body had been disfigured. <clears throat> so he's going through a lot of suffering here. He doesn't know anything about the Lord and the devil talking about him and the Lord giving the devil permission to do all of this without killing him. Uh, and so <clears throat> he's just trying to survive this, the, a series of storms, not just one storm, a series of storms. And uh, so they saw him. They lifted up their voice. No doubt they were praying. That's, you know, think about it. We need to see people in their storms. We need to pray for people in their storms and wept. We need to weep with people when they weep. Um, I mean, when I pastored all those years, when I went to a funeral, I didn't do a whole lot of talking. Uh, you know, there's no, we don't have the answers. All we can do is pray, pray, be there as a shoulder to lean on and pray. Amen. And they rent everyone his mantle. So that mantle there is the outward robe and sprinkle dust upon their heads toward heaven. So this is a, a sign of fasting, I would say. Um, and so, look at verse 13. So they sat down with him. That's what we need to do. 
We need to sit down with the people who are going through a tough time. Don't, don't do a whole lot of preaching and all that stuff. Just sit down with them and be silent. Just be there for the people. And I'm speaking to myself also. The Bible says they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights. Just sat on the ground with him and didn't say a word. What could they say? They don't know anything. Nobody knows anything. And that's what I'm trying to stress again for the third time in this little message. When someone is going through a tough time, and listen to what I'm saying. They taught this at Bible college, and I practiced it because you had seasoned professors who were pastors who had been to a lot of bad times with people. And they taught us, when you are ministering and visiting people that are going through all sorts of storms in their life, don't be preaching to them. That is not what people need. Amen. I'm telling you, you don't have the answer. I don't have the answer. The best ministry you can do to anybody that's going through a storm is to sit with them and be with them and don't do no preaching. And I'm trying to help you here. I don't know who's listening. <laughs> they sat down seven days and seven nights, didn't say one word. And the Bible says none spoke a word unto him. Why did they not speak? God tells us why. Listen to what the word of God says. For they saw that his grief was very great. I mean, think about what he's going through here. And there's no explanation because nobody has heard the conversation between the Lord and the devil. And so we need to do that tonight. That's, that's the bottom line. I, I saw God gave me three S's here. First of all, we need to lift up our eyes. That's our sight. You know, it's, it's easy. I know I live in the same flesh you do to get all embroiled in our own little world. But friend, there are 8 billion people on this planet. 8 billion. And all of us are going through storms, whether we're saved or not. And we need to lift up our eyes. And by the way, toward heaven. Did you notice the word of God? I wrote this down. I want to make sure I got it right. Lifted up their voice. Toward heaven. That's who we need to be talking to when we go visit people that are struggling. Number two, they sat down with him. Just sit with them. Stay silent because God can, God can do more in a few words than we can do in all our little sermons. And number three, they saw that his grief was great. So that's the message for tonight. All right, Brother Mark's sick tonight, so I'm going to have to uh, go ahead and shut it down for tonight. I'll do the uh, tomorrow. I'll be on probably 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time before I go to church. Tomorrow night, I'll be on. I don't know the exact time yet. I'll let you know. Let's say for right now, say 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday night. Uh, and also, you can email us at CordellClayton at Yahoo.com. You can write us at 119 Terry, T-E-R-R-Y Avenue, M in South Carolina. Or you can private message us. There'll be a place for you to leave your prayer request tonight. We're already started on our third. I'm excited about this. We went to our third list. That's the first time. Last week we had two full pages of prayer. Now we've got three. Started our third one. So we'll be laying those when we pay our tithes and offerings tomorrow at the Lord's house. We will put these in the prayer box for people that pray over the all the prayer needs that are turned in. If you got a prayer request, you want your name added to the list, you need to, uh, there'll be a place on Facebook or you can leave it here on this broadcast or you can go to YouTube and leave it there. Make sure you subscribe to our, our channel on YouTube at Clay Cordell. And so make sure you share this broadcast. Hope everyone has a good night. I'm going to get three days off and they go quick. So I'm going to enjoy my three days off. I'm going to watch my Duke Blue Devils. Hopefully, we'll beat North Carolina tonight, but we'll see. And uh, I'm going to enjoy the evening with my wife. We're going to watch some college basketball, which probably most of America is watching the games tonight. Kansas has already beat Villanova, so 
Uh, so we'll see y'all tomorrow night. God bless you. God bless America. God bless the Jewish people. And Brother Mark, we hope you feel better. In Jesus' name, we pray for Brother Mark. That you'll heal his body, Lord. And uh, tonight, he, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We will see y'all tomorrow.